Hello, Roll Mithril here once again, getting back to Castlevania Circle of the Moon. Full disclosure, I did actually do something off camera, but it was pretty minor. Checking my map after the last recording session, it did not credit me with being in the upper left corner of the Necromancer's room, so I went back to fill that in. The empty square was legit bugging me. Along the way, though, I dodged all enemies, I didn't fight anybody, so you didn't miss any item drops, and I didn't gain any more experience. It was purely a peace of mind thing. May as well put the luck booster back on. So, yeah. I was also told that there is a secret room in the shaft that you fall down to get to the catacombs, but I'm going to pass on that for now. To take full advantage of that, I am going to need another movement tool. There's something else hidden in that room, so we'll get to that later. For now, let's go through here. And into the hallway of pallet swaps. And we got prison garb. Clothes that were worn by a prisoner. It actually buffs strength, but it's worse for both death and int. Cotton robe is still really good. But yes, we have ectoplasms, which are stronger, faster, more annoying spirits. We have skeleton knights, which are stronger skeleton soldiers. And we have zombie thieves, which are stronger versions of the clinking man. And again, thankfully, the ectoplasm doesn't really do that much damage, considering how easily it can just kind of telefrag you. Yeah, the spawn rates on those things, it's obnoxious. So we can't do anything in here just yet. So let's go up here. and make absolutely sure that we've been in this corner. Just in case the map gets picky again. So, welcome to the Machine Tower. There's something about this area. I don't know what it is. It's a good deal smaller and more compact than anything we've dealt with thus far. And yet, this area really confuses me. A lot of the rooms here are a bit on the large side, they also just kind of feel like they twist in on themselves a bit. And of course we have Medusa heads here. They had to be somewhere. So yeah, I had to practice this area a good bit to make sure of where all I was going. Hearts max up. The Fox Archers do have a really good drop, if I can get it to fall. So we'll see if that happens. We have a save point over here. Good to know that's there. One of the most troubling things about this area is that there are a lot of enemies that use projectile attacks, and they like to hit you with those from off screen. Also, we have another sub weapon, the stopwatch. When in use, this stops all enemies on screen. It can be useful, but I still prefer the cross boomerang. It's just too good. Oh, there we go. Silk robe. Robe made of silk. Better for defense, and even better for int. Heck yeah! That is what I wanted. HP up. So, yeah, the stopwatch definitely has its moments. For example, rooms where you want to keep a bunch of Medusa heads at bay. So it's all just a matter of personal preference. I just like the boomerang too much. I don't really know why I went out of my way to take out that fox archer. I mean, other than the projectile attacks being a bit of a thing sometimes. But I already got the drop I wanted from it. So at the very least, that's done. So the Heat Shade. This is also a rather important enemy for us, and MP up. Heat Shade does indeed have a card. Nothing we can do in here. 
I don't want the knife. Also, it's official. Somebody in the comments has been keeping a dagger count. I kind of wonder just how bad that's going to get. So we can't go through here. Ah, oh, that knockback. So, yes, lots and lots of projectiles. Nothing we can do here. I don't want the knife! That's just going to become the catchphrase of this LP, isn't it? safe point. This area is fairly generous with those anyway. So yes, Medusa heads can petrify you. Just mash buttons and you'll eventually shake loose. just make them all the more problematic, really. So, the Thunder Demon. This is one of those, I can't remember if it has a card or not. It really seems like it should. Apparently it does. Manticore card. Wrong page. Manticore. The manticore is said to have the body of a lion and the venomous tail of a scorpion. Power of poison. Okay. So, let's see here. Venus and manticore. Together at last. Hmm. Nothing is showing up as boosted in the stats. Gains double the amount of hearts received. Okay. Interesting. And of course, more predictable. A poison whip. But you aim this one upwards. It's kind of awkward, actually. The idea is just to kind of drift poison dust over the enemies. But yeah, it's not really one of the better card combos, I don't think. But still, good to have it on hand. Good to know it's there. And good to have another card out of the way, too. HP up. Honestly, come to think of it, the aim of the Poison Whip, it might have use in situations like that. Maybe. I don't want the knife! I may just be trying to justify the poison whip being there and having that angle. I don't know. Also, apparently, they drop magic gauntlets, too. Well, HP up. We'll give you one more shot. Because it was verified for me that Stone Armor does indeed hold a card. No luck today, though.
you just go away. So we have to loop back around through here. Gave us a couple more chances at the heat shade, but alas. Actually, come to think of it, I may as well refill my health. Gonna trip back out of the way of this entrance, though. So yeah, that's been a little fun thing about this project, too, is that all three of the videos I've posted so far, the default thumbnails have been save rooms. So, yeah, I had to actually change that on the second two parts. I wonder if it's gonna do that for this one, too. Well, that's annoying. So apparently Medusa heads drop wristbands too, I saw that. I got in where I couldn't hit. I was wondering if this platform was going to show up. And we have the Earth Armor. I got stuck in mid-attack. It's another of those that it feels unique enough that it might have a card, but maybe not. It's what I thought about the flame armor, too. It is one thing about this game in comparison to the soul system of Aria of Sorrow is that now when any time you saw a new enemy, you knew for sure it had a soul that it would drop. Here, unless you look in a guide, you don't really know what's going to hold cards or not. So, every time I see a new enemy type, I'm suspicious. Well, that was almost cool. This is a busy little room. So, can't get up there. Another stone armor. And more magic. Eh, had to try. Sooner or later. Sooner or later. So nothing we can do out here. more of you in here anyway. And fox archers, apparently. They want to say hi from off-screen. You stop that right now. Well, not really what I wanted. Hard ring. Defense increases while equipped. It drops strength, it drops int, it drops luck. It kinda sucks. The defense increase there just does not feel worthwhile.
Heart's up. It's not a knife, but I still don't want it. So, back down we go. Back to the busy area. Okay, I'm not sure why the knockback went forward there. I'll take it. Yeah, the off-camera projectiles, those do get pretty annoying. Still don't really want that. So, another save room. Like I said, this area is pretty generous with those, at least. I have to give it that. Okay, nothing over here. Hello, Thunder Demon. And MP up. Another card. Jupiter card. Jupiter, god of the heavens and the leader of Olympus, has the potential of defense. So, now we can see how this combos with everything. Jupiter and Salamander. So, yes, Jupiter, basically it makes shields. So that's rather nice. Two fireballs circle you in defense. So how about with Serpent? For this you get four ice crystals. Four ice balls circle you in defense. These can freeze enemies. Good to know. Huh. Okay. That one's not telling us anything just yet. So, Jupiter and Manticore. Well, that's messy. I don't want the knife! Cloud of Poison spreads to protect you. So, yeah, I don't actually know what Jupiter and Mandragora does. We'll find out sooner or later, I'm sure. But for now, it's boss time. Meet the Iron Golem. This guy has a lot of attacks at his disposal. He can also charge himself up to make his attacks more powerful. And he can heal himself. Overall, this isn't really a difficult boss, more just tedious. It's also a good one to have holy water if you want. But you know how I love my cross boomerang. Well, hi there. 
Hugh, are you all right? What are you doing here? Are you trying to take my glory? What? What are you talking about? I just want to save Master. You're in the way. I will defeat Dracula myself, and then dot dot dot. Hugh? And away he goes. So, yeah. How dare you want to save my father? And we get kick boots. Jump against walls for extra height. Push forward and special move button to execute. So, we have a wall jump now. This is going to open up even more areas for us. Pretty stylish, even if not the most intuitive wall jump command. I still want to know what this does. I'm not noticing, like, anything. Whatever it is, it drains MP fast. So, I really don't know on that one. So yes, we can do that now. Nice. But that is where we're going to call it for now. We'll start exploring more with the wall jump next time. So with that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then... What the heck was that combo doing?